Everyone tells you not to roll your own authentication. It's dangerous, they say. You'll get hacked, they say. But I think you should roll your own auth. Wait, I thought you said this video is going to be about why you shouldn't roll your own auth. Oh, it is. Then why did you just say they should roll their own auth? Because I think they should. You see why I'm confused, right? No, not really. You're saying they should roll their own auth. Yep. And you're saying they shouldn't roll their own auth. Mm-hmm. You're saying opposite things. Yes. Please explain. I think everyone should build their own auth if they want to learn about authentication. It's a great thing to, as a developer, to rebuild these common pieces of software, like a, a text editor or an HTTP server or an authentication service, because it allows you to thoroughly understand how these things work and also just overall makes you a better developer. You learn the mechanics, you learn the pitfalls of certain implementations, and it helps you understand what's under the hood and how these things actually work. But when it comes to rolling your own authentication, maybe you don't roll your own. And I know this is a hot button topic. Everybody seems to have their own strong opinion. You'll hear everything from users aren't comfortable trusting a third party to users aren't comfortable trusting their data with you on your app if you were to roll your own. I mean, this is sensitive data. And it's kind of like if you wanted to insert a credit card into just some random website of who knows how reputable the company is, but they don't have Stripe, or they don't have PayPal, or banking info if they don't have Plaid. Obviously, there are alternatives to those, but I feel more comfortable when I know I'm using something like that and it bypasses Billy Bob, the owner of X application. Well, not X application, that's Twitter. You get Y application. I just don't know how secure it is as a user and I don't even know how secure it is as the developer because there's a whole lot when it comes to rolling your own auth. We're actually going to talk about how to go about rolling your own auth in this video too. The thing is, when you do, you have to conform to industry standards. You have to stay up to date and always update your code and any bugs or something happens well, then you're liable. It, it, it's you and only you. I have some amazing stories of, of big companies with lots of really good developers from Equifax, 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 where they had a $700 million settlement, as well as Facebook. They had a $5 billion settlement. And even more examples with LinkedIn and Yahoo. But how about we first take a look at how everything that goes into rolling your own authentication system. First things first, user registration. When a new user signs up, a really important part is that you have to figure out how to securely store their password. And what you can do, luckily you don't have to come up with your own hashing algorithm. You can use something like Argon2, which is the current, as of what month is it? November, 2024, OWASP recommendation. It allows you to salt and pepper the password, hash the password, and securely store the password. Salting, by the way, is when you add a random string to the password before you hash it so that all hashes stored are, in fact, unique. Otherwise, if you use password123, which I hope you don't, but if you use password123 and I use password123 and there is no salt and it's just straight up hashing, our hash codes, our hash values are going to be the same. And then you have hackers who use a rainbow table and then one crack will now open up every other user with that same hash because, well, they're the same and not unique. And a pepper is just another level of protection. It's a server-side secret that we add to all passwords, so even if the database is compromised, attackers still can't crack passwords without the pepper key. You'll also need to take into consideration memory and CPU cost parameters and tune them properly because you don't want it to be too weak because that's, well, it, it more vulnerable or too strong because that just results in slow logins. This is all based on your server capacity and things of that nature. Now, as for session management, this involves quite a bit. You'll need short-lived JWTs for access tokens. This is to handle authenticated user sessions, separate refresh tokens for longer sessions, because I mean, do you want your user to have to log in every single time they visit? Imagine if that happened on YouTube, that would be kind of annoying, right? But maybe in some others like banking systems, you want to make them re-log in every single time. And then CSRF tokens to prevent cross-site uh, request forgery. Session fingerprinting to detect token theft by checking if the session is being used on another device or another location. And then you don't want malicious JavaScript to steal your auth tokens, so you need HTTP-only tokens to prevent XSS attacks. And there's a whole litany of things that 
frankly, I don't know the full scope of because I don't roll my own off. I have, again, for learning purposes, but not in anything real. You also need to figure out how you want to approach everything. Like earlier, I talked about how YouTube doesn't make you log in every time, but if you have a bank system, maybe you do want to make your users log in every time. So you need to figure out that. You'd also have to figure out how to allow a user to change their password. And when they do change their password, are all sessions logged out? Also, what about a remember me functionality? I swear half the ones that I use don't even work, but you know. But then if you use that, how long do you want those sessions to last? How many sessions can be logged in at once? Like with Netflix, they say, oh, only two people can be watching at once and it has to be from the same household and blah, 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 or whatever crap they included here recently. That was really annoying. <laughs> and something that Netflix does have is you're able to go to the settings and then log out all existing sessions. Are you going to have something like that? And can they revoke access to specific sessions? There's, there's just a lot here to think about. Session rotation too. I didn't even talk about that, but there's a lot. All of this isn't necessarily tricky, but it's something you have to think about. You have to take the current security standards into account. You have to figure out what's what works for your specific app and then implement it, of course, or configure it all if you go with some sort of authentication library, which there's also strong opinions on whether or not this is technically rolling your own off. I feel like the general consensus is no, because you're using the library, but the library handles a lot of the stuff that I've already talked about, but you still need to figure out all of those specific requirements. And there are a lot of people who say, by the time I got everything configured, I could have rolled my own off custom without the library because there is a lot to it. It can be simplified, but there's still a lot going on. Like you don't have to figure out exactly what hashing algorithm you want to use and make sure that you implement salting and a pepper and you know, every little nuance. And you also have to take into consideration protecting routes. We're not just checking if a token is valid or not. We also have to consider rate limiting and because you kind of want to prevent brute force attacks, right? And rate limiting at various levels per IP, per user, per action. And validating CSRF tokens. I think I mentioned that earlier. Checking session fingerprints to detect stolen tokens. Monitoring suspicious activity. Maintaining detailed security logs. And not just to detect issues as they happen, but because this is... This is the standard you must follow. It's about compliance in many cases, like with these, GDPR, SOC2, and so on. I personally don't roll my own auth. I did mention that there are auth libraries that can help you from making all minor details, but it's still a lot of configuring, even if you aren't implementing every small detail, at least in my experience. Maybe it's just a skill issue, I don't know. But they're also also as a service, which take basically all of the work or the vast majority of the work out of your hands like auth zero which is what i typically use unless i'm trying to learn something new or try something else and which is also why i took them on as a sponsor of today's video or this portion of today's video and when i say this portion i really mean it because all the rest are my own words my own viewpoints whether you think they're correct or not that's on me <laughs> I'm just kind of sharing my experience and what i've learned and trying to roll my own off and then doing research beyond that. Anyway, let me tell you a bit about Alt0. Basically, you don't have to worry about the implementation of anything I just went over. And you get enterprise grade authentication from developers whose sole focus is just that. And all you have to do to add Alt to your app is this. Yep, very easy. And what Alt0 has actually done is rolled out a new and improved free plan for developers and small teams. You get 25,000 monthly active users, which is insane for a free tier, plus unlimited social connections for things like sign in with Google or GitHub. And you can use your own custom domain to brand that entire flow. But the second most important part, security. With all zero, you don't have to worry about all of the compliance in that aspect. They take care of that for you. And they've enhanced their built-in defenses, including brute force protection and suspicious IP throttling. But actually, I said that was the second. The actual most important part, you don't need a credit card to get started. The only reason you'd need one is if you obviously go up to the next plan, but for the free plan, in order to verify a custom domain. But that's just for verification. You still won't get charged, so you can rest easy at night. So if you want to check out Auth0, click the link in the top of the description, tell them I sent you, in order to learn more and give them a try. Okay, now about those authentication mishaps by those huge companies that I mentioned earlier in this video. Because <laughs> let me tell you, if you haven't heard about these, you are in for a treat. They're wild. Let's start with Facebook, so a thing company that is typically known for having some pretty good software engineers, right? And this isn't taken away from them, I'm just trying to 
say that even really good engineers mess up authentication. But uh, back in 2018, yeah, 2018, Facebook had a view as feature where you could go to your profile, select someone like a friend or a stranger and see and view your profile as they see it. Harmless, right? You just want to see how Sally sees your profile. But there was this one, this little video upload feature when you did that, that shouldn't have been there. And when you used it, it generated an auth token, not an auth token for you, but an auth token for the person you're viewing it as. So Sally, now you have their auth token. You're not, you're logged in as you, you're pretending to be them viewing your profile. You, you, you do the little upload feature, you generate their auth token. Now you can be them with full account access and you could do this at scale. And that little feature's vulnerability ended up exposing 50 million accounts and caused Facebook to pay a $5 billion with the B FTC fine. Now Equifax, you don't know what they are. They basically handle the vast majority of Americans credit data. Kind of important, considering the fact that you have your social security number attached to credit cards, right? Like that's kind of how you have to get. Well, in 2017, they had this web portal for credit dispute resolutions. I mean, a solid feature, right? However, and there's always a however, they left the admin credentials as admin slash admin. The, the default. They are responsible for millions of Americans credit card information and personal information like their SSNs and they left in the default credentials. 147 million people had their data exposed, including their name, their address, their social security number, their credit card numbers, their birthdays, everything, at least a lot of it. And as a result, Equifax had to pay 70 or sorry, $700 million as a settlement. I feel like, I feel like y'all are going to accuse me of trying to scare you into not rolling your own off. I'm just stating facts. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you want to roll your own off by all means, I do not care what you do. I'm just sharing the research that I found when attempting to roll my own off as well as uh, from everything from the worst that can go wrong, like these stories that cost hundreds of millions to billions of dollars. Obviously, I'm not Facebook or Equifax, which is good in the sense that I won't be fined that much money, but not good in the sense that I'm not going to be as good of a developer as them, especially when they have teams and teams focusing on this type of stuff, right? So like, anyway, I'm just sharing what I learned, rolling my own off, sharing what I typically do when rolling authentication. Uh, implementing authentication as well as this information here. Let's talk about LinkedIn. And this was LinkedIn back in 2012 before Microsoft acquired them. As much as I wish I could blame Microsoft for something else, I can't. This was four years before this. LinkedIn in 2012 stored passwords using, using something called SHA1 hashing, which not only was SHA1 weak, by 2012 standards. And when I say weak, I mean fast because slow is good in this context. Like Argon 2, slow is good. Slow is desirable. SHA1 fast, weak. And not only was it weak by 2012 standards, they didn't even have salt. There was no salting of the, there was no random string added to the password before hashing. So they had identical hash values stored. And of course, there's no pepper. If there's no salt, there's not going to be any pepper. And what ended up happening was 167 million accounts being exposed. And for whatever reason, that's a lot of users. That's a lot of users. But for whatever reason, it only cost them $1.25 million, which is still a lot of money, but not like relative to the others. But now I want to talk about the worst of all ever. Yahoo. At least the worst of all in terms of the scale as well as the worst authentication of all. Because I don't know if the Yahoo one is necessarily worse than the Equifax one, Equifax one, because that was social security numbers and credit card numbers and all of that stuff. Anyway, Yahoo's was the gnarliest. It was the absolute worst. It was just years and years and years of poor security practices. Just piling up one after another, after another, after another, to the point where 3 billion accounts were compromised, which is, by the way, every single Yahoo account at the time. All of them. This is all thanks to weak password storage, bad session management, reused encryption keys. This was a, a, 
at how to mess up off speed run. And, and they won the speed run, not that they lost $350 million of valuation before Verizon um, bought them out. And I think $112.5 million in settlements, sorry, $117.5 million settlement. And again, I'm not sharing the complexity of rolling your own auth or all of these stories to scare you away from doing it. Again, I encourage you to do it. Dive in. If you feel confident after doing it a couple of times for a couple of different apps and you can test it here and do that, by all means, just make sure you're in compliance. There's a lot of testing. I just wanted to share, again, my viewpoint, my experiences and my research. Obviously, the Facebook and all that isn't my experience, but it's an interesting story. Just whatever you do. Make sure you make an educated decision, fully educated decision, not just educated decision, but you're educated on whatever you're deciding, right? Whatever service you use, whatever library you use, whether what, whatever compliance, like your compliances that you must implement, all of it. Sorry, I know I'm being redundant at this point. It's just, I want to drive this point home. Just do your own research because after all, this, is not, this isn't even about you. This is about your users. And there's really nothing more important than your users in the privacy, the security, I should say, of their information in your app. Subscribe for more content like this. Y'all have a good one.